Hello, within this part we will focus on context switching within FreeRTOS. Important part of each operating system is context switching. Let's have a look uh, more in details how does it look like within FreeRTOS. Here on the screen we can see two types of context switching. Preemptive, which is a default one within FreeRTOS and allows to switch the context between tasks on time slice or on higher priority event. The second one is a cooperative which allows context switch only in case when the active task decides to finish its job. On next slides, we will analyze both scenarios one by one. Let's start with preemptive context switching. On the screen we can see the configuration where we have five tasks. Idle task with lowest possible priority, 0, A, B and C tasks with the same priority, 1, and D task with priority, 2. At the beginning, task D is in block state and it is waiting for the semaphore. Task A has been selected by scheduler for execution. It has been selected from a ready list. Task B and C are within a ready list. After defined time slice, by default it is 1 milliseconds, a cystic within its interrupt is triggering pentsv to switch the context to another task from a ready list. Task B is selected for run mode task A and task C are in a ready state. Before next time slice, task B decides to finish earlier its job by executing osthread yield function. It triggers pentsv interrupt to switch the context to task C. After this we have task A and B in ready list, task C continues with an remaining time slice of task B. Then Cystic is triggering pentsv to switch the context to task A again as we've got the round-robin algorithm. Within task A execution an interrupt is coming. All interrupts has higher priority than pentsv and cystic interrupts and within this interrupt, its function body in fact, there is a semaphore release. It is the semaphore which was requested by blocked task B. Scheduler detects this fact so it moves the task D from blocked to ready state and as this has higher priority than preempted task A, scheduler is triggering pentsv to switch context to task D instead of return to task A. Task D performs its operations quite fast and is sending itself to blocked state for given timeout using OS delay function. It cannot use OS treat yield as it would send it to ready state and it would be selected immediately by scheduler as it is the task on highest priority. Once task D decides to go to the blocked state, scheduler is triggering pentsv interrupt to switch the context to task A for the remaining time slot. Then Cystic will trigger pentsv to switch task A to task D which is the next one on the ready list. Now let's have a look what would be the difference of system behavior once we will select cooperative mode. Within this mode there is no context switch within time slices. Pentsv interrupt is triggered only if running task decides to finish earlier or it puts itself on to ready list by calling OS treat ill function or it waits for something or for some time calling OS delay function. In this case, interrupt still can preempt any working task and it has higher priority versus any other OS operating system components. This time, even if an interrupt will unblock any other task, even having higher priority, it will not preempt active task. Let's have a closer look on the context switch and uh, the time it is taking. Context switch time depends on the port, so the architecture we are running our operating system, used compiler and the configuration. With an STM32 devices, we need to add additionally 12 CPU clock cycles on each interrupt, entrance and exit, which is a quite big contributor to the switching time, as we are using at least one interrupt, pentsv, and sometimes additionally cystic. We should remember that context switch is performed with an pentsv interrupt, which can be triggered either by cystic on each time slice or scheduler, where it is necessary to change the active task. Some examples of booting time can be found on FreeRTOS web page within FAQs, for example within topic memory usage, boot time and context switch times. Context switch time can be much longer in Cortex-M4 and Cortex-M7 based devices with floating point unit due to necessity of stacking FPU registers. So additional 17 32 bit registers S0 to S15 and FPSCR. Rest of PFPU registers, so S16 to S31, should be handled by software. 
Within Pentest V Handler, there is a check done whether floating point unit instruction has been used and based on this, those registers are stacked and stacked from or on current task or not. We can see it on below part of the code. There is an instruction TST, which is uh, testing R14 whether it contains value 10 hexadecimal. If yes, it means that we need to store the FPU registers as FPU code has been executed within the current task. The same condition is uh, checked after we switch the task. More information about this feature can be found within one of the ARM application nodes. It is application node 298 within ARM web page. For your toys context switching, tick source step by step. So let's have a closer look how does it look the interrupt from the SysTick while the time slice is elapsing. So there is a time to switch the context from one task to the other. So the tick timer within the Cortex-M devices, it is SysTick, and this timer interrupt causes execution of export SysTick handler. It is located within port.c file. This handler is written usually in assembly language, just to be fully suited for the architecture we are using. So at the beginning we can see that uh, all of the interrupts which are using the operating system functions are blocked. For this the macro port disable interrupt is called, it is defined within port macro.h file. Then there is a trigger to pentsv software interrupt, which is responsible for the context switch. And it is done once this interrupt is called, the export pentsv handler is called, which is in fact the interrupt procedure function of this interrupt. Uh, it is again stored within port.c file. Within this interrupt vector from pentsv, we are calling v task switch context function. Uh, it is uh, again stored within task.c file. And this function is uh, switching the context by starting from, let's say, calling the macro task, select highest priority task, again from task.c file. And uh, this macro is selecting the ready task within the highest possible priority list. At the end, once uh, we selected the proper task, everything is configured for the new one, the interrupt procedure of pentsv is, is unblocking all interrupts using port enable interrupt macro defined within port macro.h file. And we are continuing execution with the newly selected task. Context switching time. A part of the theory I just presented, let me show to you some methods which we can use to verify what is real time needed to switch the context between the tasks. To do this, uh, we need some modifications to be added within our current project. Here I'm taking into the consideration the Nucleo board, uh, which we are using for the rest of the hands-ons, and uh, I am selecting the pins which are very easy to be accessed, so the right uh, and bottom side of the universal connector, so PA2 and PA3. PA2 we will configure as a GPIO output without any label, and the PA3 will be configured as event out. Event out configuration is giving the full control of the pin to the core, and uh, then the core, while we will execute the instruction SEV, will send the one positive pulse the pulse of length of one clock cycle, CPU clock cycle, as a result of this of this function. So it is very effective method to measure the time distance between uh, some parts of the code. Uh, so we will do those two modifications only, then we regenerate the code and uh, then we can put some uh, small add-ons uh, within our generated FreeRTOS based project to set or to reset pin PA2 or to generate the one the pulse of length of one clock cycle on PA3 using this SEV uh, instruction what you can see at the moment at the screen. We can put those lines in various places in the code to measure the intervals between the actions of the task switching. Uh, you will see it on next slides, the result of it. We can place it, for example, within the cystic handler 
So this is uh, with an stm 32 l 4 underscore itc file. Uh, we can put it as well within the export pend sv handler function. So for example, just before the jump to user task. So this is the line bxlr. And you can check. You can check how much time you need for your implementation. What I would recommend to you is to test the various uh, scenarios. Uh, so for example, the task switching not only caused by the um, Cystic, but as well by releasing the semaphore error queue, which is unblocking the task with higher priority. You can check as well how much time you would need if your task will decide to go into the blocked state and is giving the space to the other one or if your task is uh, deciding to go to the ready list uh, using the yield function. So there are many possibilities. The method is quite simple. You need only two channel scope to verify the timing. On the next slides, you will find uh, an example, which I did uh, for STM32L4 working on 4 MHz system clock. Here you can see an example of the context switch time and in fact the time measured between the beginning of the cystic procedure and the user code execution, so the new task execution. It is uh, 65 microseconds, assuming that we are working on 4 MHz system clock. And here below uh, on, the, on the scopes you can see two channels. The blue channel, it is the new code execution. So within my new task, I'm just changing the state of one of the IOs from high to low level. So this is the blue line. And the yellow channel, so channel one, is reflecting the similar operation which is done at the beginning of the cystic. So the, the distance between rising edge of uh, operation within cystic and falling edge, which is executed at the beginning of my new task, is 65 microseconds. I'm performing similar operation between beginning of PentSV and my new task code execution. It is 37 microseconds, so I have moved uh, the procedure of changing the state of one of the IOs from low to high level, so yellow channel, from Cystic to PentSV, beginning of PentSV interrupt procedure, and uh, having the same clock, so 4 MHz, I obtained 37 microseconds from beginning of PentSV and beginning of our code execution with a new task. Just to have the complete picture, I measured as well the time between the cystic, so beginning of the cystic, and the first instruction within PentSV. So it's more or less 30 microseconds. And in this case, I made a toggle or change the state of the pin within a cystic, beginning of the cystic on the second channel, so the blue one. So there is a change from low to high level. And within the beginning of PentSV, I used SEV instruction which is generating the single clock cycle pulse on a selected pin. And the distance between those two events is measured 30 microseconds. Then I measured the time between the jump to user task within PentSV, so almost the end of PentSV, and user task code. It is taking 5 microseconds, more or less. And here below on the screen you can see it. Yellow channel is uh, the single pulse generated by instruction SEV at the end of PentSV, so just before the jump to user task called from this uh, interrupt. And uh, the switch from high to low level within the second channel, the blue channel, is done within the user task. So the difference, the time uh, distance is 5 microseconds with the core clock uh, on the level of 4 MHz. At the end, just uh, an illustration using the yellow channel. I measured the length of the pulse generated by SEV instruction, so send event instruction. It should be always one clock cycle. Assuming that we are working on 4 MHz system clock, we have 250 nanoseconds. So it is uh, like we expected. Let's focus a while on stack pointers and stack management within free RTS based application. So within Cortex and base devices, in particular STM32L4, which is used within this exercise, within this training, two stack pointers are in use. Uh, so the first one, so-called main stack pointer, MSP, it is a default uh, stack pointer, which is available and configured after the reset of any application run on STM32 devices. 
So when free RTOS based one, main stack pointer MSP is used for interrupts and in particular for interrupts for free RTOS. So Cystic and Pent SV. The second one is much more important because this is the interrupt which is needed to switch the context. And what we can see on the screen, this is uh, how it is done with a context switch. Uh, what is the split between uh, main stack pointer and the second one, which I'll mention in a minute. So main stack pointer is used really within the interrupt and um, it is used to switch the data from one task to the other. The second stack pointer, which uh, should be enabled by the user from the code, it is so-called process stack pointer, PSP, and uh, it is dedicated for the application of the user, uh, just to uh, separate the important part of the system, so interrupts from the user code. Within FreeRTOS uh, it is used as well, so the split is the following. Main stack pointer is used for interrupts and the kernel, so the context switch, pent SV, and the process stack pointer is used to manage the task stack, so the stack of the tasks. And what we can see on the screen is, uh, please have a look, once we are executing uh, task 1 and uh, we need to switch the context to task 2, so the task one is storing its data on its own stack within its own area allocated during its creation. And to do this, it is using the process stack pointer, which is loaded with the data from the task one control block area, which contains the current state of the stack pointer. And this current state of stack pointer refers to this process stack pointer, PSP. So the task one, before we will switch the context, is storing its current data on its own stack using process stack pointer. Then with an pent SV interrupt, all of the other operations not related directly to none of the stacks. So for example, the information intermediate, in, intermediate data, which is uh, done within this interrupt is stored on MSP, so main stack pointer. So it can be used, for example, for the situation when the higher priority interrupt will pop up during the task switch. Then in the next part after task one will clean up all of the, its resources, Pent SV is switching the context to the second task. But before the second task will be executed, we need to restore its state. To do this, we are using again process stack pointer. And using process stack pointer and uh, its current state within task 2 is taken from task control block of task 2. So at the beginning, the task control block is read, then it is taken from the information about the process stack pointer location within the task 2 own stack, and uh, the context is read from there. Just to be, just to be in the state which was the last state before the previous context switch. After these operations, uh, task 2 is continuing its execution. This is, let's say, how it is uh, done within FreeRTOS and other operating systems, which are run on Cortex and base devices and STM32 in particular. Thank you for watching this video.